All right, guys, today we're going to talk about Indonesians. Do you know any Indonesians? Do you like Indonesians? I love Indonesians. You know, I've known probably about, I'd say about half a dozen Indonesians in my life. Nice people, really good people. I really enjoy talking to Indonesians and, um, I don't know, just, uh, just learning more about Indonesian life, you know, culture. I like learning about different countries and different um, languages and, and cultures and that kind of stuff. But, you know, when I, when I speak English to Indonesians, there's always one mistake that they make in their, in their English speaking right? It's, it's not a big deal to make mistakes, right? Everybody makes mistakes. But the reason I want to make this video is because I think it's an important mistake, right? It's a mistake that kind of, that kind of makes English speakers a bit confused when they, when they hear this mistake, okay? And the mistake is around the word ever, ever. Okay, what does ever mean? Well, let's look at some examples of, of how they might make this mistake, okay? I have ever learned English, Okay, I have ever learned English. Okay, that's a mistake. So I'm, I'm just going to show you a bunch of mistakes that uh, just to give you an example of, of maybe what's going on here. Why, why this is happening. Okay, I ever go to Canada. Okay, I ever go to Canada. Um, I ever eat that kind of food. I ever or I ever ate that kind of food. Or maybe they would say, I've ever eaten that kind of food. Okay, but it's with the word with the word ever, okay, I ever heard that news. I've ever heard that news. So what's going on here? You know, um, like I said, it's a mistake. And I would say there's two kinds of mistakes, okay? There's mistakes that don't affect the meaning. And there's mistakes that make the meaning confusing. So this is that kind of mistake. Um, I mean, you know, there are all kinds of mistakes, right? And like I said, mistakes are normal, especially when you're learning a language, right? It's actually good to make mistakes because when you make a mistake, then you can learn not to make that mistake, right? That's why I'm making this video, just to help, um, to help clear up this confusion. Okay, let's look at an example of a mistake that doesn't really change the meaning at all, right? He like playing tennis. He like, it should be likes, right? So this is a mistake, but does it really matter? I mean, does it affect the meaning? If I say, he likes playing tennis, he like playing tennis. I mean, it doesn't really affect the meaning, right? But if we look at this mistake here, I ever played tennis. That mistake is a bit more confusing because I, I don't know exactly what it means. It could mean a few different things, right? It could mean maybe I, I've i played tennis before. Now, this is, I think, what Indonesians are trying to say most of the time when they make this mistake. I've played tennis before. I play tennis a lot. I play tennis sometimes. I mean, those are kind of different ideas, right? Uh, with, with this one, it's just a few times. Um, with this one, it's a lot. And if you say, I've played tennis before, that just means sometime in the past you have played tennis. Maybe once, maybe maybe twice, maybe five times. You know, it, it doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. The fact is that you have played tennis before, right? So you have some experience playing tennis. Now, when we make questions in English, we often use this word ever. Okay, like, uh, I mean, we do this all the time. For example, have you ever studied English? Have you ever studied English? Right, that means sometime in your life, have, have you ever, have you ever done that? Right? Have, have you ever, have you ever studied English sometime in the past? Have you ever eaten squid before? Have you ever eaten squid before? Let me know down in the comments if you've ever eaten squid before. I, I have eaten squid Back when I lived in China, I think I ate squid quite a bit, actually. Yeah, it's, I uh, can't remember what it tasted like. I haven't eaten squid for a while, but barbecued squid. I think uh, I'd always go out, I'd always leave my apartment in the evening. One thing I really loved about China, and it's not just China, it's about like uh, Thailand and some other countries like this too, is very often there'll be like a kind of a, 
I don't know what to call it, like a barbecue cart, like a, a portable. Someone sets up like a, a a little restaurant on the street, like a cart um, with with like barbecue stuff like on it. Like maybe uh, I never knew. I never learned the words for that. And when I lived in China, I always just pointed to the ones I wanted and uh, <laughs> and then I paid money and that was it. But they take the they take the the food, whether it be like chick, like a chicken stick or like, um, squid or whatever, chicken hearts. Yeah. I remember I would some, sometimes I'd, I'd get like uh, a skewer, right? The, the wooden, wooden stick with meat on it. That is called a skewer. The wooden stick is called a skewer and with the meat on it is called a skewer. So I would, I'd order like a skewer of maybe chicken hearts or I think different organs, maybe liver or I can't remember, but some of them were like squid and, uh, I'd order a bunch of those sticks. They were like, I can't even remember, like just, it wasn't very expensive at all. Like the cheapest food you can buy in China. So I'd order a bunch of them. Then they put them on the barbecue and uh, barbecue takes maybe like five minutes or something like that. And then you just you eat them and yeah that was good I actually I haven't thought about that for a while that's one thing I really loved about being in China uh, every night I'd almost do that every evening or at least I don't know a few evenings a week I just go there was a, one of these carts just around the corner from my apartment so I'd go out there order some food the guy would barbecue it up and then I'd eat it and then go back to my apartment but uh, anyway that was just a random memory about the squid so have you ever eaten squid before let me know in the comments have you ever been to Canada, right? Have you ever been to Canada? It means just some time in your life. It could be once, it could be it could be twice. I just want to know, have you ever been to Canada, right? So let's look at the answers here to these questions. Now, you'll notice the word ever is in the question. But in the answer, we don't put the word ever in there, okay? So look at these answers. Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, I studied it in high school. Okay, you don't say, yeah, I ever studied it in high school, right? You might think we need the word ever because the word ever is here. Have you ever studied English? Yeah, I ever studied it. See, that's the mistake that a lot of Indonesians make. They put the word ever in there when we actually don't need that word. It's a, it's a mistake to put that word in there. Okay, let's look at some more examples. Have you ever eaten squid before? Yes, I have. Or, yes, I've tried it before. Okay, or, yeah, I tried it once. Yes and yeah. Can you see these words here? Is my microphone blocking these words? Better scooch up my microphone a little bit. To scooch something means just to kind of move it a little bit. So, um, yes and yeah mean the same thing. Um, now, if you want to emphasize that you've only done something once, one time, then you can use the word once, right? Yeah, I, I tried it once, or I tried it twice. Okay, um, but if you, if you don't want to really emphasize the, the number of times that you've done something, you can just say, yeah, I've tried it before. Okay? Have you ever been to Canada? Yes, I have. Yes, I've been there. Yes, I've been there before. Okay. Um, now you don't you don't need to say yes. I've ever been there, right? So that's what a lot of Indonesian speakers would say. Yes, I've ever been there. Okay. So again, we have the word "ever" in the question, but we don't have it in the answer. Okay. Now, what's the difference between this one and this one? Yes, I've been there. Yes, I've been there before. Look at that word there before. What does that mean? Actually, that's an important word in English. And this is the solution to this problem, I think. Okay, so when Indonesians say ever, what they should do is actually use the word before. So let's look at, look at some examples. Um, oh, before we look at some examples, I just want to look at this word. Okay, ever. What's the opposite of ever? You would think the opposite of ever would be never right? They look like they could be opposites, but they're not opposites. Okay. So, uh, for example, I have never seen that movie. I have ever seen that movie. 
Right, so this looks like it would be opposites. What's the opposite of this sentence? I have never seen that movie. Do you know the opposite? W what is the opposite? It sounds like the opposite could be this, but this is wrong. Okay, ever is not the opposite of never. So what is the right answer? The right answer is this. I have seen that movie before. Okay, I've never seen that movie before. I have seen that movie before. Now, you can put the word before uh, after never too. I mean, like you can use the word before here and before here. Okay, I have never seen that movie before. I have seen that movie before. Now, the word before is a little bit optional. We could just take the word before out in each of these sentences and the meaning would be the same, right? If you say, I have never seen that movie. I have seen that movie. But this word, we, we often use this word in this situation when someone asks you, you know, have you ever done that before? Have you ever, you know, have you ever seen that? Have you ever eaten that before? Yeah, I have. I've done that before. Right? Have you ever been to Thailand before? Yeah, I have been to Thailand before. You know, very often we, we use that word. Like I said, it's a bit optional, but we use it <laughs> and uh, and that's that's really the key to fixing this problem okay so if you're an indonesian speaker right you i just want you to remember one thing okay instead of using the word ever change this word to before and move it to the end of the sentence okay i've ever been there that's wrong i've been there before okay so it's a pretty easy, my eyebrows itchy. Have you ever had an itchy eyebrow? <laughs> so yeah, so that's a very easy fix, right? It's super easy. Um, now this video is not about all the meanings of before and all the meanings of ever, because we use this word very often in English. One of those examples is in questions. Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? But we use this word in other situations and also this word before has other meanings too but just just in this video just the quick tip i want to give you is to fix this mistake and the mistake is this the answer is this before change the word ever to before and move it to the end of the sentence okay now let me ask you a question um did you hear about the volcano last month did you hear about that last month what could you say? What would your answer be? Well, uh, an Indonesian speaker might say this. I ever heard that news. I ever heard that news. Okay, that's a mistake. The right way to say it is this. I heard about that on the news. Yeah, I heard about that on the news. Or, yeah, I saw that on the news. Yeah, I saw that on the news. Now, where's the word before? There's no before here. Why? Well, it's because this is actually a different verb tense. Okay, so we use the word before in the present perfect verb tense. Do you know what the present perfect verb tense is? The present perfect verb tense is when we, you know, when we use the word have or has with the past participle. So words like been or gone, right? I have been to Canada, I have gone swimming before. Okay, so this is how you make this this uh, verb tense, the present perfect verb tense with have or has, plus the past participle of whatever word it is, like visit, have you ever visited, right? The word visited is the past participle of visit. You can say, I have visited Canada before, right? Um, now, in my volcano question, that was actually simple past. That was the simple past verb tense, okay? So I asked, did you hear about the earthquake? Or I asked you about the volcano, but let's make another example, okay? Did you hear about the earthquake in Ecuador? Hey, uh, did you hear about that earthquake in Ecuador last, last week? And what would your answer be? Well, your answer would not include the word before. Because this is a simple past. A simple past just means one event that happened in the past. 
So now I'm talking about an earthquake in Ecuador. I'm referring to a single, I mean, there's probably been, I don't know, a bunch of earthquakes in the history of the world in Ecuador, but I'm referring to the one last week. It's a single event, right? I don't think there was an earthquake in Ecuador last week. I hope not. I'm just using this as an example. So, it, so your answer should be also in the simple past. Okay, so you would say, yes, I did. Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, I did hear, but I, yeah, I saw that on the news. Okay, uh, I did hear, or I did see, right? The word did is, p is simple past, or you can say, yeah, I saw, or I heard about that on the news. Okay, we're just using simple past verbs. Now, if I ask you this question, have you ever experienced an earthquake before? Have you ever experienced an earthquake before? Here, it's the present perfect, okay? Now, it's a different idea whether we use the, like the simple past and the, and the present perfect, right? The present perfect verb tense refers to something in the past. Like, I'm asking you, have you ever experienced an earthquake sometime in your life, right? Maybe once or twice or five times. It doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. What I'm asking is... Have you ever, that I'm referring to that whole period sometime in your life, right? So it's different than the simple past, right? Verb tenses, we use verb tenses to communicate time, right? So you have like future, you have past, have present, and then we have these kind of harder ones to understand, which is like the perfect tense, for example with the word have. Have you ever experienced? Have you ever eaten? Not have you ever ate or have you ever eat? No, have you ever eaten? It's kind of a weird word, right? Have you ever gone? Now, not all past participles are weird. In English, we have regular verbs and irregular verbs, right? A regular verb is like visit. Have you ever visited? right? If you look up one of those charts of the word, like, like present, past, past participle, it would be like, visit, visited, visited. Be, uh, was, been. Um, eat, ate, eaten. Okay, so visit is a normal verb. You just have the visited and visited right? But with some weird verbs like eat, it's eat, ate, eaten. I have eaten. Have you eaten lunch yet? Right? You could say, yeah, I ate already. If you want to answer in the simple past, or you can say, yeah, I have eaten. If you want to answer in the, the present perfect. Now I've made a whole, a whole series. Um, actually that was the very first series I made at Mad English TV. That's how important it is. It's a very important, you know, the, these mistakes around verb tenses are important because they make the meaning confusing if you get it wrong. And it's really important to communicate time accurately, right? Because time is important. If we're talking about different stuff in your life, time is a very important concept. And so that's why verb tenses are really important. So the link is down there somewhere in the description if you want to, or maybe I'll put that series, I'll put that playlist somewhere up here at the end of uh, this video if you want to go check out my verb tenses playlist. But so this is, this is um, a question in the present perfect, right? Have you ever experienced an earthquake before? Now, like I said, the word before can be optional. I could just ask you, have you ever experienced an earthquake? But very often we add this word before in English. Okay, so what's your answer? Let me know in, down in the comments. Have you ever experienced an earthquake before? Um, so that's it, guys. Let's uh, just do some homework. Uh, just have a simple homework question for you today. Have you ever seen a shooting star? Now notice I didn't put the word before here but I could have put it here. Have you ever seen a shooting star before? Have you ever? Okay, so that's the, that's your homework question. You have to answer 
this, you, well, your answer down in the comments, whether you have or you haven't, right? Answer down in the comments. And notice this verb see, okay, have seen. Just think, what, what's, what's the present of that verb? The present tense is see, right? Um, what's the simple past? It's saw. Yeah, I saw a shooting star, right? And the past participle is seen, which is what we use in the present perfect verb tense, okay? I have seen. So very often in English, um, we answer, your, your answer doesn't need to match the verb tense of the question. You know, for example, now I'm giving you the answer. Now I'm, I'm doing your homework for you. You better smash like because of that, guys. I'm doing your homework for you. So if I ask you this question, this is in the present perfect verb tense. Have you ever seen a shooting star before? You could choose to answer in the simple past or in this one. You could say, yeah, I saw one last night, actually. Yeah, I saw one last night. Or you could say, yes, I've seen one before. Yes, I've, I've seen many shooting stars before. I've seen hundreds before. Okay, so there you go, guys. I did your homework for you. But anyway, let me know your answer down there in the comments. That's it, guys. I just wanted to give a quick tip to Indonesian people. Um, like I said, I've, I've talked to a bunch of Indonesians, and this is the mistake that, that every Indonesian I've known which isn't that many, but they, they've made this mistake. So when I hear a certain group of people, like from a country, making the same mistake, then I know it's a pretty widespread, there's some, some issue here. And it's probably just, that's maybe the way you say it in Indonesian, right? Their language is called Bahasa, Bahasa Indonesia, right? Um, so maybe that's the way they would say it. I, I don't know. I don't really speak Bahasa. So anytime languages kind of, you're, you're trying to translate in your head from one language to another language, you experience this kind of interference, right? It's called interference where, where you're trying, the, the, the sentence is going in your head and you're trying to put that into English. And so maybe in, in Bahasa, hey, if you speak Bahasa, let me know down in the comments, why is this mistake happening? It's probably something to do with the language, right? That's how you say it in Indonesian. And you're just translating it to English. And so it's, an, it's a normal mistake. It's a natural mistake. So I just wanted to point this out because, uh, like I said, it can be a bit confusing. Hmm, what does this person really mean? Um, but now you know. So hopefully that, that gives more clarity to your speech and um, you'll have fewer misunderstandings going forward. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate everybody you know, for tuning in today. Thank you so much. I love you as always. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay whatever else. Uh, stay jovial. That's the same thing. Jovial. <laughs> jovial means just happy. If you're jovial, that means you're very happy. So I hope you're jovial today, my friends. But anyway, that's it. Um, as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.